Hey guys, Sundan here. This is giving me my chapter review to My Hero Academia or Book No Hero Academia 195 Clash, Class 1A versus Class 1B. So the chapter starts with Shinso being uh, presented to everyone, and uh, obviously Deku and Ojiro are like, oh shit, like this, guy, this guy's here. And uh, for some reason, he's got Aizawa's bindings around his uh, shoulders for, I don't, for God knows what reason. Uh, but his mask seems to be something that was designed specifically for him. So. Uh, so obviously like people like Ojiro and Aoyama and even Mineta are kind of concerned about his brainwashing abilities and stuff like that and the only person they've seen break out of it is um, Deku who says it was just a fluke but what I liked here was that Deku actually realizes that Shinso was the one who triggered his initial um, his initial kind of memory of one for all and the vestiges that he was seeing so he's 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 concerned that like it might be a coincidence, but he's also aware of the fact that it could be more than that. It could be a good thing that Shinso is here. It could be fate that Shinso is here now that his uh, vestiges have come back and that he's seen more than uh, even All Might. Or, well, not necessarily seen more than All Might, but he's seen something that even All Might didn't really get to see in terms of one for all, the original user actually speaking to him and stuff like that. So um, Shinso is then told to greet everyone, and I, I really liked how he did this. He didn't he didn't want to be friendly about it. He didn't want to like kiss ass or anything like that. He's like, I fought with you guys before. We've exchanged blows, but we're not friends. I'm not a good natured person, and the fact of the matter is that I've already started late, and you guys are hundreds and hundreds of steps further uh, further ahead than I am. So I'm not gonna kiss any of your asses. I'm here to become a great hero so that I can use my quirk to help people. And all of you here today are my my essentially my obstacles that I need to overcome. So I was like, this guy, he's a straightforward guy, and I like this guy, uh, just because he he ain't he isn't he isn't there to make friends. He isn't there to chat shit. He'll most likely make friends along the way, just because that's how it is. But he that's not his initial intention. He's there to succeed, and he's there to do his best uh, for the people. So obviously everyone's clapping. They're making comparisons to how he was like Todoroki and when he was uh, like. Uh, at the at the beginning of my hero academia, and then we get uh, given then we get uh, we're given the information about what this combat exercise is. So it's this combat exercise is taking place in the training field called Gamma, so training field Gamma, and it's modeled after an industrial area. So it's poor visibility, uh, poor footing, and all that stuff, and it has it's a very tight tight uh, it has very tight spaces for both uh, of these classes to go through when they're gonna. Um, when they when they undergo the combat exercise, so the idea is that these two teams will uh, well these two classes each of like twenty people will split into five groups of four. Uh, so yeah, so they they all split into five groups of four, and the idea is that class one A is against class one B, and each team has to view the other as the villains while thinking of themselves as the heroes, and they have to round up all four members of the other team and imprison them in this special prison design. We'll come back to that later. Um, and that's essentially the idea. They just have to uh, make it like they have to make each other una unable to fight, or present, uh, or in a situation where they're unable to fight, so possibly even just like paralyze them with a quirk or something like that, or break their spines or something like that. But um, yes, yeah, so that's all they really need to do: capture four of the other team and imprison them. Uh, but the only issue is, is that Shinso will actually be participating in these battles as well. So he'll be on one team in in both class in both classes. So he'll be on one team in class one B and class one team in class one. One uh, A, so obviously um, people uh, people start to complain about isn't this like a sizable advantage for the team of five against the team of four? But the teachers put forward that this isn't really a disadvantage for the team of four because no one's really in these classes. No one has had any experience alongside Shinso, so it's more of a disadvantage to the team because they don't know how to work with him and they, they don't know how to utilize utilize his quirk in such a fashion uh, and so naturally that it would be easy for them to have him on their team so it's more of a handicap rather than a disadvantage so obviously the all teams are like they're happy with this like okay yeah cool but Ida is just there and he's like ah, am I a hero am I a villain I need to know and I was like yeah that's that's typical Ida but then we see the prison and I really liked it because it was it's it's a normal kind of prison but then it's got some cartoony kind of headmaster uh effects on it so it, it has a headmaster's head with both his arms on the, on the top and it says come on in and it says busted on the door it says sentenced to 19 99,999 years of hard labor regrettable mortifying all that type of stuff on it so it's, it just looks like a really cutesy but really funny prison as well um but uh the, the the key thing to mention here actually is even on the team of five so even with the team that has shinso on it as long as four of them are captured they still fail they still lose so they draw lots and they get put into teams so 
I won't really focus on the uh, teams we see in class 1B just simply because there's too many names to go through. But we have Suyu, we have Koda, and we have Kaminari and Kir uh, Kirishima in uh, team 1 for class 1A. And then team 2 is Aoyama, Yao Yorozu. Uh, what's her name? Is it? What's the, I never remember the invisible girl. Yeah, Hagakure. And we have Tokoyami. We have Ida. We have Shoji. We have Todoroki. We have o Ojiro on team 3. And we have Bakugo, Jiro, uh, Sero, and Candy Guy. What's Candy Guy's name? Uh, what? Uh, where is his name, though? Asato uh, on team 4. And then we have uh, Deku, Ochako, uh, Mina, and Mineta on the, on the last team. So team 5. And uh, as you'd expect, Shinso is on team f um, team five for class one B. So it's going to be team five versus team five. So Shinso is against um, uh, Deku. So that's that's going to be something that we're all looking forward to, uh, forward to because obviously of their past and possibly because of how this is going to affect the vestiges that uh, Deku has already seen. So both teams invite uh, Shinso and they seem to be really happy having him on their team. And what I liked here was actually that Deku, he's still bothered, bothered about the vestiges and stuff like that, but he just pulls out his notebook and he's really like amped up and really motivated. And then uh, he has this competitive nature to him now that he didn't ever really have before uh, when, when the manga started at least. And he's just there ready to write down about Shinso. He's like, I want to know if you've gotten strong. I'm excited to see how, you, how you'll come after us and how you'll capture us and how you're going to think all this through and stuff like that. So I really liked that aspect of Deku and I thought that was a, a nice thing to include uh, from um, uh, from this chapter. So the time limit is 20 minutes and we go straight, we almost go straight into um, the first of the co combat exercises. But first what happens is we see Midnight and, uh, and All Might uh, pop up on the scene and they're just talking about which classes they think will be uh, victorious and All Might actually draws a very good comparison he says class 1A has been through a whole bunch of crises and stuff like that so they have more more remarkable abilities in times of crisis that they've already displayed but class B during this time that class 1A has been dealing with all this major shit they've actually undergone more more growth in the sense of like their grades their data and just honing their strengths and uh, and kind of studying their quirks to another level. So it's, it's two different types of uh, classes. You, you, ha you have a class which has been growing through um, uh, excessive amounts of stress. And then you have a class who, without this stress, have just been, have just been like training and, tr and trucking forward and just moving forward uh, constantly and just getting better as a unit and getting better individually. So they're all quite remarkable in their own sense. So it'd be a good competition is essentially what... Uh, All Might is going is saying. So then we see Suyu and it's Team One uh, versus Team One in, from both classes. And Suyu is there camouflaged against the wall. Her team can see her just about, but um, no one else can really see her, which is a good ability to have by the looks of things. And they're talking about how they're going to go ahead and uh, capture this team. So Kirishima, he's like, I'm just gonna, I want to go and like just fire off some blasts all over the place so that we can attract attention or, some, or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what his plan was. Um, and Shinso just like, oh, I think ideally we should start by neutralizing the most troublesome quirks. So they they I, they all identify Shiozaki, the the lady with the vines, as being someone who they think has a troublesome quirk. But he also realizes that Kaminari and himself, so this is, this is uh, Shinso speaking, uh, they have troublesome quirks in the eyes of the uh, enemy. So they they're probably the first two that are going to get uh, uh, that are possibly going to get eliminated, or people are going to try to attempt to try to attempt to try to eliminate them as quickly as possible or, or maybe the first two so then they um i think it's Koda actually he gets um, some uh, of his pigeons they come in and they talk to him they're like yeah yeah we still we just saw shiozaki uh she's chilling just kind of uh, she's by her wands she's been left alone and she's just there with her vine spread out she's just got a wide range of uh, like probes essentially around her and come coming uh, kirishima is just like i don't like like the idea of ganging up on a girl but let's go ahead and do it until suddenly we have that what's his name Shishiba I think it was or Shishi Shishida or something like that I forgot what his name was uh, yeah Shishida he just r jumps in out of nowhere it's like out of nowhere and he absolutely wrecks both Suyu and Kaminari with a move called Roaring Rage and he, he just slams them straight into a wall both into like different walls and they just they just get wrecked and he he tells them what 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 how this how this is declared he's like we'd already taken into account the fact that 
uh, Koda would be using his searching abilities. And we also knew that you'd be most wary of like uh, Shiozaki. And we knew that we, if we use her as a decoy, we'd be able to come in close and basically invade your territory first. So while you were doing all this thinking, we already had our plans sorted out. And we, we invaded first. We made the first move. And you guys were sleeping on your asses, basically. So Suyu looks like... I'm, I'm actually really concerned for Suyu. She might be down and out. Because I don't think her quirk and her, her body type are just built for this kind of damage. Um, but uh, Kami, but uh, Kirishima might be fine. Uh, so it turns out this guy, Shishida, has the, a quirk called Beast. And he can transform into a beast, drastically augment his physique and musculature and uh, strength, hearing, sense of smell, sense of vision, all that good stuff. But he becomes like really excitable when he's in this mode. So then we see another guy from Class B who utilizes this kind of air prison and it's really cool because if you can use that as a, as a pro hero it would be something that would be very useful against like really dangerous enemies if you can like if this air prison is something that can't be broken very easily or, or even if he imprisons someone for like a very short amount of time it's something that would be really helpful for all the other heroes so koda gets imprisoned and then shinso's like shit i gotta act so he touches something on his mask and he he just shouts out all right kick their asses shishida which is the name of the guy from class b and shishida responds Obviously, this is something that Shin Shinso needs. You need to respond to whatever he says for his brainwashing to take effect. So instantly, uh, Kaminari's like, yes, we've got this. And Shishida's been brainwashed. Uh, but the, the key point here is, is that Shinso was actually talking with the voice of the smaller guy from Class B. And Deku notices, notices this. He's like, oh my god. So that mask allows Shinso to talk with the voices of others. So it can copy the voices of others. And he calls it Artificial Vocal Codes Persona Code. So with this ability, he can essentially talk with you with the with the voice of a friend, with the voice of a family member or something like that and brainwash you once you think it's that person calling you. So you just be like, yeah, what's up? And then suddenly you're brainwashed because he's talking in the voice of that person. So that's actually a really, really awesome piece of like um, piece of tech he's got on him and something which will help him a lot because he can just like imagine if uh, if he's talking like because he's going to be against Deku and against Ochako, Mina and Mineta and stuff like that. So it, Mineta is kind of a, <laughs> he's a kind of an idiot. So if he, if he talks in like uh, Deku's voice or something like that and Mineta responds, GG, that's one brainwash, that's one person that's been brainwashed. And I'm not sure whether Shinso can only brainwash one person at a time. I think it was something like that. But um, if not, he's going to be brainwashing mans for like for jokes. So I really like that and I thought it was pretty cool. But I also really want to see what Shinso is going to do in terms of will he trigger more memories for Deku in terms of his, the vestiges? Uh, and will he help? Is there something about his quirk that can help Deku to unlock more memories and to kind of travel within these vestiges uh, more willingly rather than just like it comes up randomly? So maybe he'll, he'll be able to kind of uh, ferry uh deku through his own kind of through one for all's memories that would be something that would be awesome so let me know what you guys saw this chapter let me know what you guys saw this review like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll see you guys hopefully monday tuesday maybe not so much uh hopefully monday tuesday for the national tie side but if i'm if i'm in london trying to find a place to live and stuff like that this next week's going to be a bit iffy so i'll see what i can do but um let me know what you guys think so all that good stuff uh and i'll see you guys in a bit